see. Before we start, please note that this video contains violent and graphic scenes from the war in Ukraine. If you have followed the conflict, maybe you witnessed how crucial drones became in Ukraine's fight against Russian forces. And it's also changing how we view the war. Eyes are everywhere. We film one another. So that's the first, maybe, a media war. Almost, no, or almost, it's cifered. This time I'm in Ukraine, meeting soldiers of the so-called Army of Drones. So there we are, somewhere deep in the woods. And we look around where fierce fighting took place, the hotspots in the beginning of the Russian invasion, Bucha, Borodyanka. It's just pure evil, it's like animal state. First off, just traveling to Ukraine is time-consuming these days. I have already been here two times, once in winter to film in Chernobyl and another time in summer. Kiev used to feel closer to Berlin, now it's a grueling trip. Next stop is Warsaw and we have 24 hours ahead travel time going to Kiev. First by plane, then we travel across Poland by minibus. Welcome to Ukraine! and then by night train, from Lviv to the capital. Do not. Good. <laughs> Here I'm meeting with Sehi. Hey, How's it going? Who is actually a well-known photographer. Since the war, he has been flying military drones and is an instructor. In a few days, he will be going back to the front. So it's uh, nine in the morning. We are about to witness a uh, training of the aerial reconnaissance unit here, uh, together with Sehi and his colleagues. Taking place in a location that must remain secret. So there we are, somewhere deep in the woods. This here is like a training ground. They will be showing us a little bit how they prepare for the fight. And to protect the soldiers, we must also blur them. My famous group. <laughs> the training takes two weeks until the instructors are satisfied because the conditions at the front are challenging at best. There is no GPS on the battlefield. The drones are not stable. You need to calculate the wind, the height, like to aim. It's, yeah. it's a little bit uh, harder because you need to uh, to keep drone stable with your hands, with the sticks, and you you need to do it fast. It's a game of cat and mouse on the battlefield and the drones are dangerous as these images will have you believe. The Ukrainian drone pilots are training for the stress and learning tactical maneuvers. That is how their army of drones is preparing for battle. We teach them here, in a safe place where, where they can like uh, train and, and have like this like muscle memory. So in a stress situations uh, they like they will not need to sing so much. From what I observed during training, the bombs fall from a height of 100 meters with precision and accuracy. Uh, crazy shit! Eh? It looks like a game, right, with all these dummies and the stuff here. But in the end, someone gets killed, buddies. It's as simple as that. Fuck that shitty war. Hundreds of drones and countless models are in use. New types are being developed in so-called hackathons. And the videos they capture shape our view of the conflict, says Sehi. Because we have such a term, that if you don't have any damage, 
то ти можеш типу, розповідати, що хочеш, але типу, якщо ти не має відео, значить ти не має ураження. От, і ми фільмуємо один одного. От, тому да, це стопудово, це така перша, мабуть, медійна війна в світі повністю, ну чи майже повністю оцифрована. Тобто ми е, є безпосередньо чи спостерігачами, чи учасниками цих бойових дій. There is tons of footage on Telegram and the web because of this, and the drone army wants more. Actors like Mark Hamill are calling for the nations for the drone war. I call on you to support the brave Ukrainian and join the fundraiser for 10 Hydran drones that will help perform reconnaissance missions. В цій війні насправді дуже важливі дрони. От, і це, мабуть, зараз одна із головних стратегій нашої держави для закупівлі дронів і використання їх на фронті. Саме для того, щоб воювали роботи, а не люди. От, і це, насправді, дуже важливо. Тому що те, що зараз виконують дрони, дає нам змогу зекономити, по-перше, і зберегти життя людям. От, які у нас зараз воюють. По-друге, вони нам розширили спроможності і для розвідки, і для коригування вогню, і для навіть знищення ворожої техніки і, там, і живої сили. But the images they see remain brutal, and the drone soldiers themselves are often only a few kilometers away from the front lines. People get killed, you see terrible stuff that you, that, that you have to cope with. How are you holding up with all this? Ну, у мене дуже проста мотивація. Ну, от, насправді, е, одна з головних моїх мотивацій – це повернути свою сім'ю назад, і щоб вони вже приїхали вже в мирну країну. От. А мир сам до себе так не прийде до нас. Тому саме головне наша зараз робота – це знищувати якомога більше русні. І насправді, е, е, от, якщо справді там, ти в цивільному житті десь там мирний там країні, ти б'єш людину, звичайно, ти там переживаєш якусь гаму почуттів, все, от, то от, в цій ситуації зараз ти просто відчуваєш, що ти трошки покращуєш е, ситуацію, якби, трошки робиш крок там, до перемоги, знищуючи їх. Тому наша головна мета – повернути їх назад або в мішках, або якимось чи, іншим чином. От, тому з, саме головне, що у нас, окрім всього цього, звичайно, ще тримає – це гумор. От, без цього вже ми ніяк. Тому що весь час ми жартуємо, і, можливо, це є таким чином у нас захисна реакція на все, що відбувається навколо. And together they turned the tide of the war. Early on Kyiv was thought to have fallen within a couple of days. Today large parts of Ukraine have been liberated, but it was a tight one. We are actually so close to Kiev. It's only half an hour from here to the capital, to the city center. And if you see that collection here of tanks in the background, then you understand how close that was in the early days here of the Russian invasion. I'm, I'm glad to see that they were obviously stopped. Someone stopped them big time. You don't want to, you don't want to sit in one of those. Left behind are the destruction and misery, and places that gain sad fame like Bucha, Irpin and Borodyanka, which we visit with our Ukrainian crew. If you guys see that here, how does it make you feel? Is that just anger or...? And for me it's always like a big, huge black hole inside. Even when you are yourself, you understand you are safe, your family is safe. Seeing this just kind of kills something within you. Mm. I think for me it's just a frustration, you know, I don't understand why. Why and how, how is this possible in the 21st century, you know? This should not be happening. Yeah. Especially when it happens to your nation, you know, when it happens to your people, that, that strikes a lot. According to estimates, well over 400 billion euros will be spent to repair the damage. With each day of war, it becomes more. Not to mention the irreparable damage and trauma to the displaced. For me, what I realized being here is that war and all this stuff is so much about messing with the enemy's head, right? And like just like shitting on everything that they have, it's pure evil, it's like animal state. They are cleaning up fast in Ukraine, 
But what remains in the country are the attacks and the air raid siren, which we experience again and again during our trip, even if almost no one enters the shelters anymore. One of the sirens is like super close. What a shitty sound that is. Frightening sound actually. Third time, fourth time, like it's permanently going off, but I think we should uh, get the hell out of here. Red, Everything right? what is red is uh, air raid. And they just uh, inform you about the takeoff of the uh, um, fighter jets. And they do it on purpose, they just take off yeah. and they fly a couple of rounds and they sit. So each time they're just exhausting people psychologically yeah. and even our air defense, they totally every time they need to be alerted full time. If you think about it like the financial damage as well, the economy doesn't function. Yeah. And people don't work, people don't earn money, people don't can't spend money. So if you put that all together, that's like hundreds of hours when country is basically paralyzed. In Kiev, we meet again with Sehi, the trainer of the drone unit. So it's afternoon in Kiev. We will meet Serhi at his home place. He will show us his work. In case you wonder how things are here in Kiev these days. I mean, it's mid-April, over a year after the invasion. But as you can see, traffic is running, shops are open. You can get your cappuccino and your stuff. So life goes on, of course, with some limitations. Okay, come on, let's go. Let's cross here now. While we were there, a nighttime curfew was enforced as well. And the city was emptier than usual. Like 8 million Ukrainians, Sehi's family has fled and are currently in Germany. Now he's living alone in a big apartment in the city center. It's my equipment. Yeah. Before the war, Sehi worked for a production company and took aerial pictures of Kiev. One of his most iconic pictures is Lady Motherland, the Kiev landmark surrounded by clouds. As well as many others, until the war broke out. Uh, rocket це це якраз ці фотографії, які я робив під час блокауту, то відомий, які там всі те, що росіяни нам намагалися зробити. От, і в принципі для себе я так зрозумів, що це достатньо історична подія. І, і прикольно це зафільмувати, тому що, по-перше, Київ без освітлення, він навіть без освітлення виглядає дуже круто і фантастично. От, тому намагався постійно це знімати. От. Ну, поки не було світла. Зараз про це можна тільки так по фотографіям згадувати. Тому що, як, як видно, світло скрізь у нас є і все окей. Although the electricity and lights are back on, the families are missing here, says Sehi. Many men are staying alone in Ukraine, and of course, the war has turned pretty much everything else upside down. Насправді було важкий момент, мабуть, в минулому році, коли виїхали з окупації, коли сім'я поїхала, і ти ти повинен був думати, а чим тобі далі займатися, тому що, ну, в продакшн, який ти працював, не працює, і умовно ти там, тобі майже 40 років, і ти такий, хоп, а що далі робити? Тобто ти умовний безробітний. Для нашого спільного друга гуляли і цілий рік не бачились. І от ми випадково зустрілись Розговорились і виявили, що він один із тих засновників аеророзвідки. Він каже, Сєра, що ти тут? Я говорю, та от я якраз думаю, а я вже там думав, чи мобілізуватися. Ну, тобто треба ж було кудись при... застосувати свій... свій хист. В принципі, от зараз я на тому місці, де я і повинен бути, і чувствую, відчуваю себе комфортно. І розумію, що от зараз на тій позиції, яку я зараз займаю, це у нас, на, мабуть, найбільш ефективно. But he lives a double life, trenches in the morning, drinks and shades in the evening. It's as absurd as the war, which is now entering a phase where drones could again make the difference. That was our video from Ukraine. Please share it and support our work with a follow. Thanks for watching.